so yeah, welcome to our Civic Champs webinar all about grant writing. Um, today, me and TJ are going to go over a nonprofit's guide from start to finish for grant writing 101. So we're going to give you tips and tricks through the entire process of writing grants um, and just a couple things to keep in mind. Um, we are recording this webinar, so you'll get these slides afterwards um, through that presentation, but we'll also send out all of the slides. So if you are a big pen and paper person like me, you can certainly still write notes, um, but we're definitely going to send you all of the links and all of the slides <clears throat> afterwards. So don't stress about that. All right, so we'll go into some introductions here. Um, like I said, my name is Emma. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the Director of Partnerships and Strategic Initiatives here at Civic Champs. Um, a little background on me. I actually studied instrumental studies and entrepreneurship in college. Um, I'm a 2022 Venture for America Fellow. Um, so I'm in a two-year program um, that's helped move me to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, to work with Civic Champs. And some of my favorite organizations to volunteer with would be Hit Like a Girl. They do um, advocacy for female drummers, um, Western PA Diaper Bank, and the Education Partnership, who are both Civic Champs customers in Pittsburgh, um, and the Missouri Fine Arts Academy, which is in Springfield, Missouri. Um, but of course, I also love supporting and promoting the Real Q. And so today we have TJ with us. And so TJ, if you want to introduce yourself too. Hi, everyone. I'm TJ Murphy. Um, I'm the executive director of Real Q, Pittsburgh's LGBTQ film festival, um, actually starting tomorrow um, in Pittsburgh. Um, I have a bit of a filmmaking background. I'm from Pittsburgh originally, um, and I'm currently back in school um, a little later in life, too, for um, social work. Um, I volunteer with a number of organizations across the city, mainly focused um, in the queer community, um, I sit on the board of the Pittsburgh Equality Center, which is our former um, gay and lesbian community center. Um, and I also volunteer year round um, for our Pittsburgh Pride Revolution, which um, is one of the largest prides in America. Yeah. Yeah. So TJ, I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. Um, TJ and I have actually worked on a couple grants together. And so we thought it would be a great opportunity for both of us to just share some, some tips and tricks with you all. All right, so this is our agenda for today. Um, we'll start with a bit of a um, you know conversation around basics to grants, what are grants, and um, what are the different types of grants, and then we'll move through this um, talking about you know beginning to end grant research to writing, the relationships and and organizing. Um, but definitely stay tuned till the end. We have different freebies and announcements that we'll be giving. Um, and so we wanna make sure you guys um, take advantage of those too. All right, so to begin here, um, I thought I would just share an opening stat that over $105 billion um, were donated by foundations in 2022 um, for different grants, for different nonprofits. Um, this is a stat from Double the Donation. And so you can see, right, there is a lot of funding out here that your organization can really be taking advantage of, um, especially in the grant making space. And just to zoom in, because both me and TJ are in Pittsburgh right now, um, in 2022 alone, just one of these seven private foundations in Pittsburgh dispersed more than $18 million in nonprofit grants. So that's just one of these. So you can think about in your own city or your you know, state, all of the different foundations or all of the different entities that are giving grants um, to nonprofits, there's a lot of money in this world. And so to really understand the different types of grants as well as the process could be super beneficial for your organization um, and um, the different folks that you're partnering with. So we'll, we'll start there. Um, yeah, TJ, if you want to share more about what a grant is. Yeah, so just going over the basics, um, you know, grants are funds that organizations, particularly nonprofits, um, will receive um, that are not expected to be repaid in any way. Um, and grants can be awarded by state, local agencies, private foundations, um, corporations, 
um, and also the federal government, which I think is not listed there. But um, in order to be awarded your gr a grant, your organization should write, um, submit a proposal to be eligible is usually um, called a letter of intent, would be the first step for receiving funding. Um, and a grant proposal that will typically request funding in order to support activities or programs that are consistent with a nonprofit organization's mission. Yeah. So we'll definitely so, dive into that a little bit more specifically. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly. So I'm now going to just dive into um, six different types of grants now that we've given you some definitions there. Um, so yeah, these are just six different types of grants that I'll go through today. Of course, there are tons more, um, but to give you a sense of the different things that your nonprofit might align with best, I'll, I'll read through some of these. Um, so first on here, I've, I've mentioned the program development support. Um, this is often the most popular type of grant um, for nonprofits to apply for. Um, this, this kind of funding um, goes for specific projects or programs. Um, and these are generally um, restricted grants where recipients must only use funds for the exact purpose outlined in the grant proposal. Um, so TJ is actually going to give an example of a program um, support grant that he wrote recently. Um, so number two here is that capital funding support. Um, these grants are most commonly for capital projects such as building construction, property acquisition, or similar expansion campaigns. Um, however, only established organizations are usually encouraged to apply for capital funding. Um, and you also, with these, must convey the intention that um, the use of the capital funding is not just going to renovating your building or, you know, creating a new space. Um, you have to obviously give a lot more purpose and narrative to that. Um, number three here is in-kind donation grants. And so these kinds of grants, um, you know, help organizations that are in need of resources that may not be monetary funding. And so you can think about this as, you know, donations of equipment or supplies um, or even, you know, consulting, those kinds of things, uh, maybe legal advice, those kinds of donations that can be given to your organization. Um, number four here is general operating support. And um, this can go to any operating costs, such as your team costs, your building. Um, and in addition, operating support grants are less restrictive than that first grant I mentioned, those program development support grants. Um, but as expected, these operating support grants are more rare in the nonprofit world. I feel like they're becoming more popular um, for different organizations um, and foundations to really support general operating um, grants. Um, but I thought I'd mention that. And then number five here is matching grants. Um, so I'll actually deep dive into this in a second, but matching grants, um, you know, with this type of grant, a funding source agrees to match a specific dollar amount of funds, but only if the applicant raises at least that same amount, or if you're thinking about volunteer hours, um, you're matching that dependent on some guidelines. <clears throat> Um, and then the last one here is research grants. And so research grants are frequently awarded to individuals or teams that are associated with institutes um, of higher education or research oriented organizations. Um, you know, they're usually around research and academic achievement or scientific discovery. So if that is really applicable for your organization, definitely look into research grants. Um, I would say that research grants are definitely much more competitive and they're, you know, within the academic space typically. And so um, just keep all of that in mind as you continue to forego um, or continue to go for different types of grants. Great. Okay, so now I'll pass it over to TJ and he'll give you a couple examples. Um, so real cute predominantly is funded um, through foundation money, um, particularly in Pittsburgh with a little bit of um, federal help. But um, two recent um, yearly grants or also bi-yearly grants um, that, you know, really help support um, the film festival year round. Uh, one is a program and development support that we get from the Heinz Endowment Small Arts Initiative grant. Um, they sort of define that as the development of small professional arts organizations and the artists with whom they work with. So those funds can specifically go um, to say compensating artists 
um, that maybe the film festival is bringing in, the sort of programming that we're doing, um, you know, whether we're paying directors, we're paying fees for our films, but not necessarily for general operating support of say in-house salaries or marketing. Um, it really is specifically meant to be spent um, on programming and on, um, you know, artists specific salaries and compensation. Um, to, to take that over to the flip side, one that M and I were working on um, this year um, that we just submitted not long ago was for the Pittsburgh Foundation was one of the first times we had applied for general operating support through them. Um, the nice thing about general operational support grants, as you can see here, is it's um, a discretion of funds um, of where they want to go. You can, you know, pay that through um, salary, rent, day-to-day um, -day activities, um, you know, major purchases of um, equipment, um, marketing strategies, um, consulting fees. Um, really across the board um, can be spent on where you and your board think the organization needs um, to put those funds the most um, to help the overall health of the organization. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll give an example um, or go a little bit more in depth on another type of grant here called matching grants. Um, so I shared with you, you know, this is about a match match um, to dollars, but it can also be a match to match to volunteer hours. Um, and so I thought I would deep dive just a little bit because, of course, Civic Champs mission is to, you know, continue to help nonprofits with their volunteer programs. Um, and so with um, volunteer matching grants, this is a type of corporate giving program where companies provide a donation match for volunteer hours. Um, so this can look like um, a couple of different things. First, kind of volunteer matching program um, is this dollar per hour match to an individual employee um, volunteer hours. Um, another type here is a donation match for um, a nonprofit's entirety of their volunteer program over a course of a time period that they've laid out. Um, and then another is based on an event. And so maybe you have a once a year really big event with a lot of volunteers, or maybe it's a week long event with a lot of volunteers. Um, sometimes organizations will match based on your events too. So specifically with these volunteer matching programs, 40% of Fortune 500, 500 companies offer a volunteer grant program, um, grant applications for you to apply for. And so if you have never considered applying for a volunteer um, matching program, you should definitely do this. It's a great way for your organization to, you know, boost your volunteer program, but also, of course, um, obtain some more funds. So here's just a couple examples I've put together. Um, here's just six different companies um, and their live applications here um, and information on the right. So we'll give this out to you all. And these are um, hyperlinks to the actual websites. Um, but just to give you an example, right, if we look at Walmart, they do that individual and event program match um, based on, you know, $10 an hour, uh, max of 100 hours. Um, and so you can see how this could really add up for your organization um, if you have different volunteers that are, you know, giving to your org on a, a regular basis or on an event to event basis, too. Yeah, and of course, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that Civic Champs also um, can really support these kinds of types of grants. Um, if you're looking for a way to track these hours, um, it's a very simple way for your, your different volunteers to pull out their phone, check in and check out, um, you know, using geofencing technology, um, they're, you know, um, announced at the different events, uh, you know, check in right now. So you're never going without these hours being tracked. And then if you look at the back end here as maybe the nonprofit administrator, you can filter based on events or based on people to track the amount of hours that you need. So you can see at the top here in the dashboard that this organization has acquired over 17,000 hours of volunteer um, work for their organization. So it's a great way for you to be tracking that information for all of your different applications. Great. And so I just, you know, went into a pretty fast um, dive with those volunteer matches. 
Um, but if you want to learn more, Gung, our CEO, has actually done another webinar on that. And so um, you can look at the blog post or look at that video later. Um, I'll also answer questions after the call um, about if you're interested in getting involved with those volunteer matching grants. Great. All right. So we'll move to the next section here now that we've gone over some grant basics. Um, so now we'll talk about what it looks like to actually research grants. Um, and then from there, we'll talk about starting to write your grants as well. So I'll talk about this slide first and then pass it over to TJ, but it's, you know, there are so many different um, platforms and programs out there to help you with your grant research. I've personally used Instrumental, um, Open Grants, SBIR, um, Grants.gov to all look up different kinds of grants. Um, and there's so many more out there that can help you with this process. Um, so you don't have to just rely on Google to look at. You can certainly do that, but you can also go into some of these different um, websites or, you know, places that have so many different um, grants that you could be searching for. And then, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so there's generally four different types of grants, um, national grants, which can generally come from the federal government or government agencies, um, state grants, um, which are similar, but, you know, on the state level, um, private foundation grants, which we just talked um, a bit about, and corporate grants, which can also come, you know, say within that volunteer matching, but also corporate foundations um, that you can apply for. Um, you know, specifically we have your key bank, a lot of the banks, PNC, Citizens Bank offer um, tons of corporate grants. Yeah. Um, here's an example as well um, of using Instrumental to help with research. Um, they're actually a partner with Civic Champs as well. And so um, essentially you can see over here in the top left corner that this person researched business engagement grants and over 300 matches showed up. You can then see the deadlines. You can attach these to projects. Um, so this is really just one example of what that looks like. Um, but definitely, you know, find out which one of these really makes the most sense for you um, if you're interested in finding things to help filter um, the noise, I suppose. Great. Um, and then I can talk a little bit about um, grant research tips here and then pass it over to you, TJ, as well. Um, but essentially, um, I'll just mention the first one here. Um, definitely look at all of the different um, grants that you have won or maybe even lost um, with your organization. Um, if you're new to your nonprofit, um, new to the grant writing space, um, but you know former coworkers that have worked on this or colleagues or peers, um, find all of those because that research could really be helpful for, for future grants. Um, even just connecting to the folks in your organization that have written grants in the past can be a really great place to start um, if they know of different research tips that are personalized um, for your nonprofit. Um, and yeah, TJ, if you want to share the rest here, that would be great. Yeah, and to piggyback off of um, definitely organizational history, too, it is so important. Um, you know, some real Q's been around for 38 years. We've had um, a ton of people come and go, um, as most organizations do. Um, and, you know, having um, that archive of looking up is very important. So I just wanted to under underscore that. Um, yeah, and definitely networking with different nonprofit friends, um, partners, um, every city We'll have, um, you know, professional networking groups um, to join and just, you know, being candid, having candid conversations with people about where are they getting their funding from? Do they know of opportunities that are coming up? Um, you know, and yeah, and I think as we list here to recycle um, grants that you use, if your mission, if you're, you know, if you're in an organization where your mission um, is pretty steadfast and is not going to change throughout the years, it's okay to um, sort of recycle those narratives, um, especially if the work that you are doing um, is the work that you're setting out to do. Uh, you know, you're you're doing something successfully. Why try to reinvent the wheel every year? Yeah, yeah, that's great advice there. Awesome. So yeah, now we'll talk a little bit more about those first steps to writing as we keep going through our our conversation today. 
So yeah, here are a couple tips that we came up with for you all. Um, of course, I think it's a really great practice to copy your grants into your own workspace, um, whether that's going to be Google Drive, Excel, or, or other management programming that you use. Um, write it all down in a, in a place that feels comfortable for you so that you're not always going back to maybe the, the foundation's website and, and trying to fill it in there. And then maybe it, you know, goes unsaved. Um, so put it somewhere where you feel really comfortable. And then the second piece of advice I'd, I'd say is keep all of your drafts. Um, cause just like TJ said, maybe something you wrote in the beginning of this grant is not what you're going to end up writing, but it could be helpful for another grant down the road. So don't delete anything. That's really my biggest advice here. Just save all of it. Um, and it could be helpful later um, for different grants. And then a couple other things here, I would say write out your expectations. If you're going to work with other folks in your nonprofit, or if you're going to work with external stakeholders to write the grant or even partner with your grant, um, it could be super helpful for you to know, okay, you know, I'm as Emma with Civic Champs, I'm going to write the technology partnership portion, but then TJ is going to obviously write the, the real cue narrative of why it's important to have a film festival um, for LGBTQ plus um, awareness in Pittsburgh. So um, there's different, you know, components here and it's important to write out those expectations. And then last advice I'd put here is to review all the winners that have come before you for this grant. And so typically all of this is written on the website that you're looking for these grants. Um, feel free to even reach out to these people, um, use them to your advantage as your network um, to, to know exactly what the foundation or different organizations are looking for in these grants. Yeah, and then this is a freebie that we'll show at the end as well. But as um, you know, we continue to want to support all different types of nonprofits. Civic Champs has created a nonprofit grant proposal guide. And so you're welcome to take this home with you to your you know, own nonprofits. But it really just lays out all the fundamentals to grants, like writing out the first portions of your budget or even writing out those key stakeholder expectations. Um, writing out timeline, writing out questions for program managers. Um, we've listed all of that in this. And so I definitely want to make sure you all take advantage of this um, resource. And then last thing here um, for managing grants, I mentioned earlier Google Drive and Excel, but if you're also interested in working with people in the space that are experts at managing grants, I've listed four different organizations here that you can check out. Um, but Amplifund, Blackbaud, Sage, and Every Action are all really great resources that help nonprofits manage their grants from beginning to end. Um, and so if that's something you're interested in, definitely reach out there. Um, we also have connections in those spaces. So if you're interested um, in helping, wanting us to help you get there, we can certainly do that too. Great. Um, TJ, if you want to yeah, so how to start, right? Um, that can kind of be the most difficult part. Um, so one, determine what your budget is. Um, you um, make sure you compile work samples, which we will definitely get to some examples of that, um, in a bit. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You're good. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I will so compile work samples, which we will talk about a little bit on the next slide. Um, I would say having an in statement um, or statement from the previous year. Um, your team bios, demographic directors, this is something um, that you know we've been um, in grant writing um, specifically over the last several years. Um, they want to know who are your stakeholders, who are the people that you're working with, um, age, race, Oh, I think I may have just lost 
Oh, wait, no. There you are, TJ. You're muted. Yeah. That's why I lost you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Okay. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Uh, where did you, where did everybody lose me here? Um, I think right near the end of the demographic information. Okay, yeah. Um, I would say that's something that we've really been realizing. Um, I've been seeing a lot on most grants, um, especially from foundation um, funding, um, wanting to know the team that you're working with. Um, so, you know, I think it's important to have those sort of demographics just on hand saved. Um, definitely have a well thought out mission statement um, for your nonprofit in general. Um, and sort of, you know, I like to call it an elevator pitch story, right? What is the purpose and impact of your organization in three sentences? Um, and that should be a little bit, a bit different than a mission statement. Um, you know, not just what um, are you trying to accomplish, but what are you accomplishing? Um, and what are you doing already? And then definitely having updated website and social media, um, which, you know, should include photos, um, some of those board demographics, um, contact information, event information, whatever it is that you want to highlight, um, because I guarantee people look at those. Um, so yeah, some examples of samples of work that um, the film festival will put out. Um, you know, we have a trailer every year that we compile of um, the different films that we're showing, which we think showcases sort of the creative side of the work that we do. Um, media reports, reviews of the films, um, you know, whether positive or negative, including those things in there um, for people to uh, see the impact that you're directly making on the community. Um, you know, sort of that outside perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, TJ. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. I don't know what no, it is. You're, you're telling <laughs> Um, Great. We're, we're moving right along. Um, would love to share more about that key collaborator and relationships component to grant writing next. So yeah, when we think about key collaborators, a couple tips I've mentioned here, um, definitely meet with your grant program managers. So whoever is listed on, you know, maybe we're talking about foundations. Um, if there is a program manager listed at the bottom, or even if it's info at foundation.com, um, reach out over email and try to set up some time over Zoom or try to set some time in person um, so that these organizations can really put a face to the name um, when you're writing these grants. And they'll, you know, look back and say, oh, wow, yeah, that was TJ. I remember meeting with him about a week and a half ago. We went through his questions. Um, and it also gives you a sense of what they're really looking for. So you can ask them all their questions and they're always super helpful. Um, and so TJ, TJ and I have actually done this um, with the Pittsburgh Foundation where we you know, met with one of their program managers, asked our questions. They helped us you know, stay right on track to what the grant was asking for and even gave us advice for some things that was missing, that were missing. So um, definitely do this. And then when you're thinking about key collaborators, um, you can even think about this for folks helping write your grants. And so if you have volunteers that are in the copywriting space or love to write, um, maybe studied English and don't get the opportunity to write as much, um, you know, lean on your volunteers to help you with these grants as well. Um, you can also call upon board members or your board to think about folks that may have advice. Maybe they previously were at foundations and can give you some expertise or even help with the writing. And then TJ mentioned this earlier, but call upon your nonprofit friends in your region or maybe just even um, from life that you know of um, to help with writing. Um, because, you know, it can feel really daunting at first if it's something you're taking on all on your own. Um, and so definitely ask for help. Um, most of the time, folks are very willing, um, if you split up the work, right, um, to support you in different ways. And then the last thing I wrote on here was um, this key collaborator of technology. Um, this is personally not something that I have done yet with my different grant writing um, background, but it's something that is becoming more and more present um, in our world. And so if you have a background in business analytics or maybe have folks on your board that have more of an expertise in this, thinking about different language processing algorithms or extract, transform, and load processes that can help you filter out grants. And so if you use these different kinds of algorithms, 
exams. It can take a lot of the manual um, research and, and reading and writing piece out of this. Um, so definitely use technology to your advantage um, when you're thinking about collaboration. Um, so yeah, like, you know, I think collaborate is the key here um, with as many different people as you can. Um, you know, other nonprofit organizations, um, I'll give you a real world example of um, City of Asylum Pittsburgh is a local nonprofit um, that brings accelerators to Pittsburgh um, who are seeking asylum. They also host um, an array of free events throughout the year um in their space um on the north side of Pittsburgh which includes poetry readings and jazz and um book readings all sorts of things um and years ago I was working there um and felt there was a lack of LGBTQ representation in their programming and thought how can I fuse the two organizations that I'm working for currently together um and out of that came real stories which went from a three month a year um, series seven years ago to now an every month a year free series um, of international LGBTQ films that we screen at City of Asylum. Um, that collaboration also started out, you know, very small and over the years, um, you know, came from a sort of in-kind donation uh, perspective to now, um, you know, actively collaborating on funding um, together uh, for that series. Um, so, you know, it can kind of be about sort of a little bit of who you know or the networks that you have on your board, um, but also identifying organizations in your city locally that um, have a very similar mission um, and are hoping to achieve the same things you are. Um, and, you know, that same being said for say the city um, that you reside in, the federal government, um, or I'm sorry, the local government, um, the public school system, if you're um, you know interested in reaching out to youth, um, tax sectors for sure, young professionals. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you know it's really dependent on identifying um, not just who you want to, work with, but who is reaching the audience that you also want to be reaching. Yeah. Yeah. So greatly said. And I love your story with City of Asylum and how that's turned into something um, so wonderful for Pittsburgh. So yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. And then just continuing to talk about collaboration here, um, specifically with volunteerism, I thought I'd add a couple stats here to just get your minds thinking about grants that you could write. But, you know, one in three funders actually have never received funding requests for volunteer engagement. Um, and, you know, also thinking about that, 70% of funders actually do connect volunteerism to stronger civil society. And 55% of funders believe volunteer engagement improves the org's capacity to make connections with people and within the community. Um, so funders, you know, believe in volunteerism as a strong grant writing component and narrative um, and really want to see more folks incorporate volunteer program asks in their grants. And so um, with that in mind, of course, Civic Champs also helps folks write grants. We've actually helped win over $2 million for customers. Um, this is a free grant writing support um, that we do. And so if this is something you're interested in collaborating with, please reach out to me afterwards. Um, but of course, you can see some different um, examples here. So the second point here, you know, we worked with a drug recovery nonprofit and helped them win a little less than $200,000 with a component of technology that we helped collaborate in writing um, to work on transportation and volunteer tracking. Um, and so, yeah, if you're wanting to build your volunteer programs, um, let's, let's support your grant writing with that and help you win more funds for your organization um, with that kind of narrative. Great. All right. So we've made it to the final piece here of organizing the process. Um, so I'll pass it over to TJ to, to round us out. Um, so I think some of the most important things of starting out, um, you know, something that 
can go on throughout the year, but sort of starting out, um, you know, that December, January timeline is creating a timeline of grants that you know will be available. Um, you know, everybody, every foundation, every corporation, they're all on their own. <laughs> they're all on their own timeline. So it's kind of important to get the, you know, to always sort of keep your eye on those every few months, um, especially, you know, foundations that you might really be um, interested in getting involved with. Um, but yeah, sort of having that calendar, having that timeline available um, that is the, you know, most convenient for you. Um, you know, staying uh, in conversation um, with people about the grants that you are writing, um, whether that's getting in contact with the foundations, talking to your board regularly. Um, and then, you know, once again, hopefully if you get the grant, um, saying a big thank you, having follow-up emails with people, um, just being as personable as you can. Um, you know, they're looking out for the same types of uh things you are um, is to make the city, make your community a better place, right? Um, yeah, and definitely then keeping track of always knowing if you do get that, um, that funding, um, what comes with it? Um, what is the follow-up? Um, you know, what are you going to have to report? Um, yeah, I would you know, from my recommendation, always have sort of the information of what was your impact? Uh, what was your outreach? Who, what was the audience you were specifically um, trying to attract? And did you attract that audience? Um, was the impact you were trying to make achievable? Um, and I think, you know, from my own perspective, I think sometimes it's absolutely okay to be honest if you maybe did have a, a spot that was lacking. Um, to be honest with that and say, yes, you know, maybe we didn't reach the, the people that we were trying to reach this year. We're going to try harder next year um, with your help. Um, so I think, you know, never feel bad about being honest with people. People understand um, that not everything is achievable all the time. Um, partner requirements is another thing. If you're, you know, applying to this funding with other people, um, not necessarily just a fiscal sponsor, um, but maybe in the terms of like the example I gave you of City of Asylum, um, you know, are there, is there information that we would need from them um, in the reporting? Um, restricted grants is something like we talked about. Um, were, was, were these funds meant to be spent um, for a particular event, for a particular person? Um, you know, having that sort of itemized information. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, at that, uh, many folks start, but they don't finish. So just start. Uh, that's always like the hardest thing to do. Um, and you never know, but you might be part of one fifth of people who actually submit grants and then maybe get them. Yeah. Yeah, so you never know how many people are really applying for these different opportunities. Um, so we really encourage you, right, if you're starting this, really push it to the finish line. And if you don't get it the first year, um, you'll at least know how the process went and you'll be ready for the, the next year to come. Um, we put this picture just because we, um, as an organization with Civic Champs, were accepted into this program called Milestone Makers. And actually one of the requirements, to TJ's point, was that um, Gung got to go to New York City and have his, you know, organization in Times Square um, for, you know, um, maybe, you know, a couple minutes, which was really cool. And so, yeah, you never know. There might be certain opportunities when you win grants. Um, so keeping all of that in mind, um, you know, before you start writing is, is a great, a great thing to, to do. Great. So I will just go over a couple of overview marks here um, and then we'll wrap up our conversation. Um, so, yeah, number one, um, like we said in the very beginning, know the different types of grants um, and then know which grant fits your ask. And so if you're looking for in-kind support, if you're looking for capital funding, if you're looking for program specific funding, um, know which kind of grant you should be researching. Um, point number two, look into volunteer match programs. Like I mentioned before, if you are not already matching um, funds to the amount of volunteer hours that you're, um, you know, accumulating over a year, that's something you can really easily do with so many different companies. 
Um, number three, use Grant Tracker and search tools like Instrumental and all the others that we listed on that um, page. This can really help you when you're filtering out um, or filtering in certain grants that you may not have known that may not be in your community, your local community, but might be at the federal level, might be at the state level um, that you weren't aware of prior. Um, number four, use a contract of expectations or that freebie that we're going to send you so that you can write out all of the internal and external um, stakeholders that are going to be a part of this, exactly what their you know portion of the grant writing is going to look like. Um, if they're an advisor, if they're a writer, um, one of those things can, you know, this kind of contract can be helpful. Um, point number five here, I, I can't stress this enough. I think it's really important to write your budget first. Um, this really helps when you write the rest of your narrative for grants because you know exactly what you're asking for um, and it can really clear up a lot of confusion. Um, so definitely consider writing that portion of your grant as one of the first things. Um, point number six, ask key collaborators to help support your grant. Like I said before, you do not have to write all on your own. There's plenty of folks in this space that are willing to lend a hand. Um, point number seven, meet with program managers um, and get to know the funders in your city. So go to networking events um, and, you know, ask to meet online so that different folks can start to know you and you can start to know those folks. Um, number eight, document everything. Don't delete any of your work because you may be able to reuse and recycle the, the information that you've listed. Um, number nine, understand grant requirements like we just mentioned um, with TJ. So if you have to track certain KPIs or different metrics, make sure you're really tracking those throughout the year so that when the, the one-year mark or maybe five-year mark comes around, you know exactly where you can find that information. And then to TJ's point, send thank yous um, always to all the different folks that have helped you throughout the process, whether it be your volunteers, um, board members, other colleagues of you at the nonprofit, or your program managers who helped give you advice throughout the process. Um, so yeah, that that is our overview, folks. Um, I hope this was really helpful for all of you. Um, of course, I am more than willing and TJ, I'm sure too, to deep dive into any of these with folks. And so if you want to, you know, take time with us afterwards, we would certainly love to go more into this. Um, but yeah, that's a general overview, right? There's so much to grant writing that we could explore. Um, so yeah, like I said, stay in touch with us. I've listed both me and TJ's information. Um, and so you're welcome to, to email us or connect on LinkedIn so we can continue the conversation. And then, yeah, if you want to share TJ about some exciting stuff that's actually starting tomorrow in, in Pittsburgh, I'd, I'd love for you to do that. Yeah. So the Real Cute Film Festival, um, for the 38th annual festival, um, we're the sixth oldest LGBTQ film festival in the world as well. Um, in Pittsburgh, we'll be opening um, tomorrow, running until October 15th. I will mention for those of you that are not in Pittsburgh, I'm not sure many people are not, um, our seven unique shorts programs um, are presented anywhere, anytime across the U.S. on demand. Um, so you're welcome to catch those wherever you are. Um, you can find out more information about that at realq.org. Great. Yes, I know I will be attending. So I hope to see most of you there too. And then I think someone put this in the comments as well, but we're going to send a link to this nonprofit grant proposal guide to all of you. Um, this is something that we help design in Canva. And so you'll be able to download it for yourself and write in the information um, for your own organizations. But yeah, we will send the links to that um, uh, and I think Chloe may have also just put it in the chat. So you're welcome to star that in your um, browser to use for later. I'm um, sorry to interrupt quick question on this. So yeah. I am part of a volunteer organization. So can I share this guide with my other grant members? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is a free piece um, of a guide for, for anyone that's interested. So yes, definitely share with all of your friends in the nonprofit space. Um, and of course, if there's things that you think there might that might be missing from this 
guide that we put together, let us know and, and we'll continue to update it to be as helpful as possible. Great, and then a couple other um, freebies here. If you are on this call today, you actually receive a Civic Champs discount for two months free. And so um, if you book your demo um, before you know November 2nd and tell us in that call that you were a part of this webinar, then you'll get that discount. And so we would love to work with you to track volunteer hours, to, to bolster your program um, for your nonprofit. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we've helped, you know, acquire a lot of funds for different organizations and customers in grant writing. Um, and so if you're interested in going on that journey as well, I would be more than happy to do a one on one grant writing session with you, um, as well as any kind of advice or just you want to talk some things out. I'd be happy to meet with you, too. So you can use my link as well to schedule time with me um, and we can we can talk. Great. And then the last thing here, um, of course, we love to do webinars with different partners in the space um, to continue to provide resources for nonprofits all over the world. And so on October 19th, we're doing a webinar with Volpro around tips for volunteer coordinators. Um, on October 26th, we're doing one with the Education Partnership, um, which is a customer of ours in Pittsburgh, about engaging and motivating parents, grandparents, and families for back-to-school events. Um, and how we can cultivate them into being volunteers. And then on November 2nd, I will actually be speaking about mentorship um, with a thought partner in the space, um, Julie Cantor, that works with Two Mentor Consulting. And we'll be talking about mentorship and how to set up um, programmatic success for your mentor programs. Yeah, so that is it. Thank you, everybody, um, for taking time out of your day, maybe your lunch hour, um, to talk with all of us. Um, it was really great to, to have this conversation with you, TJ. I really appreciate you being here um, and sharing your knowledge, too. So, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, of course. So TJ and I are happy to um, answer any questions. Chloe, I don't know if you want to come off mute and maybe ask a couple for me and TJ. Yeah, um, I found one from earlier from Angela. Um, and she asked um, if you have any recommendations for connecting with local foundations. Yeah, I can I can go first and TJ if you have anything to add as well. Um, I think my biggest recommendation is to go to all of the different networking events in your city. I know that can be really daunting and scary, <laughs> but like literally probably on a weekly basis, there is going to be one or two different um, kinds of networking opportunities that you can get involved in, whether it's um, in the foundation space or in the entrepreneurship space, even just like getting your name out there and connecting with folks um, could be super helpful. Um, and just supporting other nonprofits, like TJ said, that have the same kind of audience or mission that is aligned to you. Um, so like going to the film festival, if that's something you're interested in and wanting to connect with TJ, right? That's a great first step um, to go in person. Um, but yeah, TJ, I don't know if you have anything else you'd want to, um, yeah, I think that's you. great. I would also identify whatever city you're living in to see if they have a nonprofit, um, partnership group. Yeah. Um, I know most mid to large cities, um, do there may be a small membership fee, um, but then those groups are really there to connect you with those resources, connect you with each other. Um, and kind of go from there. So I would look up to see if there's sort of like a nonprofit chamber of commerce or something yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Even like affinity groups in your different cities. So um, I'm a part of like a young female entrepreneur group in, in Pittsburgh. So different things like that, where you can help connect to people um, with maybe similar backgrounds that can help um, uplift and share your voice, I think is super positive too. Great. Chloe, anything else you want to bring up? Or, and I guess other people too, if you want to come off mute. Yeah, it looks like you covered everything. But yeah, like you said, if anyone wants to come off mute, feel free to ask away. Great. Well, How do I sign up for those webinars? 
Yeah. So we are going to send, yeah, we're going to send um, a follow-up email to everybody that came today that has links to all of the rest of the webinars. Um, I don't know, Chloe, if you have, yeah, there it's are, they're actually in the comments as well. Um, so Chloe Anderson put upcoming webinars and there's Zoom links to all of those. And so feel free to copy paste those, but also um, we'll email you after this um, so you can have those as a resource too. Great. Well, thank you everyone um, for joining today. It was really fun to, to deep dive into this and hopefully we'll see you soon for, for another webinar coming up. So yeah, thank you everyone. Have a good thank rest you. of your day.